We're going to uh, get started now. Um, yeah, I was just going to say, just so that everybody knows, this, if you haven't found it already, it's caught us over here on the right, and it's just unisex, just turn the lock, so you don't get interrupted. Uh, there's coffee outside and water outside, and we'll have our break and everything out there later on. Uh, there's uh, some order forms for DVDs, if you don't have a current order form, up here on the reception bench, uh, and some CDs of the basically the, the, pay, the all the written stuff that is there, all the pageant messages and all that kind of stuff yep. is there. Uh, and there's a donations box if you'd like to make a donation for um, AJ and Mary's travel and work and what have you. Yeah. Okay, and uh, thanks for all coming down. And Dave is the man you've been speaking to on the phone, <laughs> if you haven't met him before. So, <laughs> so thanks for Dave for organising this uh, today with us too. Thank you, that's our pleasure. Yeah, we've had a really good trip. Uh, we did a weekend um, last weekend at Udlow, and it was a really good weekend. We had around 130 or 140 people there, and uh, you, I've now posted the mp3s of the weekend onto the website um, so you can actually hear that weekend on the website the discussion that we gave then was about God's laws and so we talked a lot about God's laws uh, generally an introduction and then we talked about God's laws involving love of others like we talked about what laws uh, control the, if you like the love of others in terms of how how our soul responds to loving others and how their soul responds and so forth. And then what we ha happen is myself and Mary have travelled down to here um, and we've we stayed in uh, Gold Coast, Byron Bay, Coffs Harbour and we just stayed with different persons on the way down. So it's been really fun for us um, meeting up with different persons and spending a bit more time with them and they all give you their love as well on the way down and then uh, we had one night in a bed and breakfast and then last night with Dave and Sally and uh, and then we will be going from here on Monday across to Armadale and on Tuesday and Wednesday we'll be at Armadale and Wednesday night there's a group at Armadale on the way back up and then we finish off the little tour I suppose you could call it uh, with a weekend at Brisbane um, uh, and that weekend we're talking about love of self and love in relationships. So that'll be an interesting weekend too, I think. So today what we wanted to do was to give you the opportunity to just ask as many questions as you wanted to ask. Now, if they're personal in nature, then please feel free to still ask them. Um, the reason why is that a lot of times we find that people come up to us and ask us questions that are personal in nature because they're too afraid to ask them in a more public setting. But the problem is we finished up getting 20 questions of the same question <laughs> asked on a personal basis, which means saying the answer 20 times. So it's much better if you have a personal questions of any type as well, that you feel free to ask them. And remember that from God's perspective, everything is naked and open anyway. Um, so I'm not suggesting you all strip off at the moment and get naked. <laughs> what I'm saying is emotionally, what we need to do is allow that to occur um, and get used to that process you know, of being open and, and free with, our, with, with what's going on in our lives. And you'll find that that actually helps open you up emotionally as well. So if any of you have questions that are personal in nature, uh, feel free to ask them. Now, some of you may feel a little concerned that these DVDs then get uh, given to other people, which they will. So I must warn you about that in advance. Um, but at least you won't have the camera panned on your face, so you can have a bit of a... You can animal. deny everything. Yeah, you can, it's all deniable, you know, <laughs> if that's what you wish to do. And we, we also feel that, uh, we're happy to ask any personal questions on, on our behalf as well, both Mary and myself. So feel free to ask us personal questions besides questions about divine truth. So, and uh, we can give you any answers along those lines too. So that all being said, what we'd like you to do is just open it up to you and your questions, really. Um, Has everyone uh, seen a DVD before? Yeah. Anyone not? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's pretty much seen a DVD. No worries. No? Everyone First time for some of you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, Great. And there, I have got five 
introductory DVDs with me. Um, so I'm perfectly happy to give you one after the session if, you, if you'd like one, so for those of you who haven't. All right, fire away. What questions would you like to ask? Fire away, Matthew. Just be into the microphone. For the last few months, five or six months, I had a nightly visit of some entities. They come in, they play with my doona, they give me a shiver of energy across my back, and then peacefully they depart. Yeah. Now, that has been going regularly every night, sometimes two or three times a night. Now, they look friendly, they feel friendly. Yeah. The question, the point is, they don't talk to me. Right. Over the last six months, all I got out of them, Matt, hello, <laughs> yeah. and that was it. Right. One day we can sort of uh, uh, illuminate me on the subject. You want to start first, Matt? Uh, so what kind of feelings are you getting from the mat when they're coming? Well, when they're coming, I feel their presence mildly and a sort of tug on my doona just to say we are here mm -hmm. and make sure that I am reasonably awake. Then sometimes I sort of uh, walk across with the feelings like a cat yeah. walking across me. Yeah. And there is a sort of a build-up of energy, yeah. uh, and then a whoosh of like a shiver. Uh, I can't call it electric energy, but something similar, yeah. uh, which goes up on the back. Is it pleasant? Is it a pleasant sensation? Sorry. What, what kind of emotions are you feeling when all this is happening? Unemotional, I would say. The approach is uh, rather, I would say, clinical, perhaps. Mm -hmm. It's friendly, efficient, but there's, it doesn't invoke any particular uh, emotion. So you're not left with any feelings of, uh, after, after they've gone? What is the feeling that you're left uh, with? Like being slightly energized, and I go to sleep very happily the day after without, it's, they are not disruptive. No. I don't feel any lack of sleep thereafter. Yeah. And what, when did this begin? This well, it was after watching your uh, DVDs. Okay. About, I would say, two months uh, thereafter. Yeah. And do you feel those two events are connected? Well, they are coincidental, <laughs> let's put it this way. I'm not jumping to no conclusions. Yeah. But I'm wondering whether they ever uh, bother to speak to me. Obviously, that they can speak. And obviously, I can hear. Yeah. It just I didn't offer any more than just two words. Yeah. Matt, hello. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like a feminine voice uh, and very, well, friendly for want of a better term. And are they female or male? Well, they stick to my bags. They never approach my front, so I would, uh, I'm not quite sure. But uh, uh, they have a slightly feminine feeling, yeah. Yeah. or a feminine feeling. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, in terms of what's going on, is that obviously when you first saw the DVDs, there were some changes that occurred in you about the spirit world being a bit more real than perhaps you'd considered it being before, and and because of the the higher sense of reality going on inside of yourself with regard to the spirit world that then puts you in a state where spirits can communicate with you now many of the spirits who wish to communicate with us don't necessarily um, they have all sorts of ways of being able to influence us on a day-to-day -day basis so they don't really need to speak much with us because they're often influencing us emotionally all through the day but sometimes they like to let us know that actually they are influencing us that they're actually connected with us now, when you're, the reason why it happens when you're lying in your bed more so than the rest of the time is because you are a little more open to the connection at that time. And so um, they'll often either wake you or get you just in that stage before you're going to sleep. And, and, 
And in that state, you are a lot more open and aware uh, to the spirit world than you would be in your day-to-day -day state when you're you know, working through the day or doing things through the day. And all they're doing really is just letting you know they exist and reminding you that it's all real. Um, and that's their main purpose, I feel, of them actually visiting you. It's no, there's no other, you could actually ask them questions if you desired. And um, have you considered doing that, or? Yes, mm -hmm. but uh, they remain stone. They they don't speak. To they you. don't speak. Yeah. They <coughs> sometimes they do if they uh, approach me. Well, I'm not in bed. Yeah. Uh, recently, I was watching TV. Yeah. Uh, not always uh, you DVDs, but sometimes if we watch the news. Yeah. Um, they do sort of make. And of course, give me the shiver. Right. Uh, what I would like to say is that they are welcome change to the entities that uh, I was uh, like accosted by some years ago. Yep. Obviously, I have bad friends there because they won't be off the planet. And uh, in 1944, they actually managed to uh, engineer my death. Yeah. You, you've, you've been a very mediumistic person all of your life, um, and, um, but unfortunately, because of some of your soul condition issues when you were younger, um, you would have attracted different types of spirits. And, and this type of spirit being a bit different in their energy means that you, your own soul condition has changed during that period of time. So, so that's a good sign for you that, that your soul condition, that's the emotions within you and your emotional condition and the sum total of your belief systems and emotional condition, all of those things have changed quite a lot from the time you were young to, the time, to, to now. And because of those changes you've made, th there will be a different attraction going on with the spirit world than what you were having before. Can you hazard a guess which uh, sphere those uh, spirits might belong to? I feel like the second sphere of spirits. Um, they're pretty shy with you still, um, and um, I feel probably also investigating your changes a little. So they're mm -hmm. around you quite often, investigating the changes you are now making uh, inside of your soul in terms of your connection with God, and they're noticing those changes. And rather than trying to find out anything or speak with you about things themselves, they are actually watching these changes and seeing what they can use of those changes in their own lives in the spirit world. So they're actually investigating the truths that you're investigating. Um, so I feel they're in the sort of top of the first sphere, early second sphere, and uh, they're not uh, disruptive, but uh, they're, not yet fully, they're not yet fully connected with the divine path either. Yeah. Thank you. Dave? Uh, can we? Um, uh, is, 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 there is a couple of people here that hasn't haven't seen any DVDs as yet. Yeah. Um, is it possible to go through a bit? Just following on from the spirit uh, question, there. What happens when somebody passes? Sure. And uh, explaining that spheres and where they're likely to go and that kind of the basic sure. stuff there that we might be able to. Yeah. And by the way, Dave's mother only passed this Thursday, just last, gone. So, so this is a very real feeling for Dave. So, he, um, so it's a good, good question too to answer. When you pass, it's very different for each person. Um, it depends a lot on what your belief system is and what your life has been and a lot of other things before you pass as to what actually happens when you pass. So. Let me give you some maybe scenarios of different types of people who have lived their life on earth and then what may happen to them when they pass. Let's say you're the kind of person on earth who um, has lived a pretty relaxed sort of a life. Um, you've never done any real major harm to anyone on earth. You've always tried your best to be loving and considerate of other people. You've uh, never really had much of an interest in God or, or any of those kind of things. You've never been too religious, really, um, and, but, but you've lived a happy life. You've got married, you've had some children, and uh, all of those kind of, th you know, the normal sort of a life that many people in Australia in particular uh, live nowadays. 
And then something happens, let's say um, you, when you, you're a bit older, you know, maybe in your 60s or 70s, and then you get some kind of disease or, or something like that that finishes up causing your body to decay quite rapidly and you finish up passing. So let's say you pass from something like um, a, a, a heart attack or something like that. Now when you pass, um, the first thing you become aware of is that you're still alive and yet you are not in the body you just left because many times you actually can see the body laying in front of you or in your, often you'll be hovering over your body. And then you'll notice when you look around you that there are some other spirits, pe people looking at you. Now some of them are not, uh, don't seem all that friendly and familiar and yet other ones of them seem really, really friendly and some of them seem like they are ready to talk with you and so they'll, t they'll speak with you about what's going on. But they generally wait for your desire um, to speak with you. So they speak with you. And let's say you've never had any belief in a spirit world at all. You, you were the kind of person who was basically what you classify an agnostic, right? where you didn't really know what to believe, and you didn't really think there was any God or any spirit world or anything like that. Um, but you weren't sure anyway and you didn't really think it mattered to your life on earth. Well, what happens then if you pass in that state? You're quite open to hearing new truths, right? Because there's nothing stopping you from grasping new things except your own belief system. And if you have a very, like, uh, passive belief uh, where there's no fixed or firm ideas inside of, inside of your mind, um, there's a high likelihood you'll listen to somebody about you know, where you're going and what you're doing. But the disadvantage is you won't know much about it. And so you'll be very, very reliant on another person telling you whatever it is, the truth, the truth that, they're telling, that they're telling you. Now, dependent on your desire, and most of the time your be desire will be along, probably bent along the scientific in the sense of, oh, I want to find out about where I'm living now and so forth it will depend on what happens next. Now initially what happens is most people who have died suddenly from something like a heart attack feel still quite connected to the earth. And so what they do is they, uh, some people get into a state of confusion where they want to get back into their body and they can't and they get quite distressed about that. Others uh, feel a state of, oh, obviously I'm, I'm dead, um, my body's laying there and you know it doesn't seem to have any sign of life. And what's actually physically happened at that point is there's a separation that's occurred between the spirit body and your physical body and there's a thing called a silver cord which is a string, it's a, actually a physical connection which is energetic in nature that connects the two bodies and that breaks, so it physically breaks. So what it means is that instead of seeing through your physical body's eyes now, you now see through your spirit body's eyes. And instead of feeling things, touching through your physical body touch, you're now seeing, you're feeling things through your spirit body's touch. Does that make sense to everyone? So your entire nervous system, if you like, and your entire skeletal system, muscular system, of which you, by the way, do have one, but in a, in a highly, I mean, in a much higher state of vibration, that entire system is actually now being utilised by your soul in order to experience its environment, just the same way as you're currently doing now in your physical environment. So you can think of your physical body as a, a really like a robot that your soul uses to express itself in this physical dimension and your spirit body is the robot that your soul uses to express itself in the spirit dimension. So now your soul is expressing itself in the spirit dimension, your physical body can't be used anymore to see out of to, f to touch things or anything like that. And there's a slight change, you know, like you can feel that change in you. So it's one of the things that you notice. And you'll start feeling lots of lots of different things inside of you. Like all of a sudden colours seem to be more colourful, for example. So instead of seeing the normal spectrum of colour that we can see with our eyes in the physical, there's a bit wider spectrum of colour generally that we can see. Now at this stage we haven't gone anywhere necessarily in the spirit world. All we've done is we've focused on just like noticing that we've passed, seeing our body, seeing our loved ones probably around our body, feeling some of their emotions and that's where we start feeling some things because we start feeling their emotions and most of the time their emotions will be of grief, right? 
and then we start feeling, but I'm alive still. There's nothing for you to cry about. I'm alive. I don't know, you know, you start, you start having these kind of emotions of what are you crying about? Oh, well, I, I must have died, but I, I feel fine. Um, and then you try to start, and many, many of them, many of the spirits in this state try to start telling the ones who are crying uh, and grieving that they're still alive. Most of the time they can't hear them though, so, so they stay crying and that sort of causes a bit of distress to yourself because you, you, it's like if you, were, if you were home and somebody's crying about missing you and you're standing right in front of them, you know, that's, you, it's really like that. And so you go through some emotions about that. But then after a while um, you may spend a bit of time with your family trying to notice what they're doing and one of the first things you start noticing is actually many of the things they said to you that they felt about you they don't actually feel about you, right? And you start seeing that many of the things they didn't say about you that you would have liked to, them to tell you, they are now telling you, in, in their heart, you can see that, that they now have those feelings. You also start seeing the ones who have been dishonest with you. So you start very rapidly seeing who was your friend really and who wasn't. And I don't know if some of you watched the movie What Dreams May Come. You remember when he walks into the church at his own funeral, and he looks past a few people and says, I don't know why you're here, why are you here? So <laughs> he, Cause in his, you know, he never felt connected to them in his life state. So you feel these really strong senses of truth as well. Does that make sense? And, uh, and you start you're seeing who really is interested in you and who isn't, and that's a bit upsetting sometimes, because sometimes you can even find out that your wife or your husband wasn't really interested in you and things like that, which can be very distressing. Um, and you might find out how much people were annoyed by you or, um, and all of those kind of feelings. So you start seeing the truth of every interaction if you haven't seen it before you passed. So that can be a pretty distressing process. And, uh, and for many, many people at that point start feeling a bit distressed emotionally. But if everything has been pretty much what you had, <coughs> Uh, when you're on earth and you think it was what you had on earth, then what will happen is you start wondering how you got here, where you got to go now and all those kind of things. And that's the time when some, some of these spirits around you will actually take you with them into the spirit world. And you cross a barrier. Um, it's described in the book Through the Mists, like a misty barrier between the earth and, and, the, and the first sphere of the spirit world. And you cross this barrier and you're now in a world that looks similar to the world we have, although we don't, not the buildings and everything, much more natural, sort of like, for many people it would be like visiting a rainforest type of um, national park or something like that. And there's people around, lot, in fact, in some areas, lots of people coming and going, because there's quite a number of people dying at any one time, and so you have lots of people coming and going through this place. And then the spirits will generally, if you're not very attached to earth, will generally inform you or show you your own condition. Um, they do this sometimes by show, giving you a mirror so that you can look at your own physical condition. Um, or you start noticing other people's condition. You notice that some people are really, really ugly and distorted in their bodies and, <coughs> and almost repulsive. And then you notice other people are quite pretty and you know, who look quite beautiful, but there's not too many of them generally. There's a lot sort of who are sort of average looking, bit old looking, but a bit distorted and you can see different problems in their body. And then after a while you realize that, wow, I'm probably looking like that too. So then when you look in the mirror, you, you see yourself. Now, for the person I described, he hasn't done anything really, really bad in his life, but there's, there's obviously he hasn't learned much about the spirit world, he hasn't learned much about perhaps love during his life, he might not have been a very emotional person during his life, and so he will be in like what you would call a first sphere condition. And his condition physically will be a little perhaps worse or, or about the same as what he had when he passed, um, and there'll be not much changes, in fact, right at that point. And then spirits will generally say to him, well, your location in the spirit world will mirror your condition. And they'll take you to where your house is built, that you have actually built, through your own condition here on earth. So every one of you right at this moment 
has a place of residence in the spirit world which is the mirror of your current spiritual condition and these and then these helping spirits will take you to that location and say here's your home which you created right? and then you start obviously having a lot of questions about that how did this all happen right so you obviously been educated about all of that and how that all happened now at this point a lot of people are not very happy of the thing they created in the spirit world so they're not very content with the home that they made because it's nowhere near as nice as the one they just left on earth particularly if they're a wealthy person on earth they'll feel that and so many of them will be very drawn back to the earth and become what you now many of you would now known as earthbound in that sense what they will do is they'll stick around the earth you know trying to live out more of their life on the earth rather than going back to the spirit world and living where they where their soul condition is created now at that point whatever you learn is just the same as what you would learn if you're on earth so if you weren't that interested in learning about things about spiritual things then you might not be for some time very interested in learning about it in the spirit world either does that make sense and so you know you may stay in that place in that condition for, for quite a long time until you realize that actually all you need to do is exercise a desire and then you'll start learning things and so a lot of times because of our life here on earth and what we learnt on earth and what we didn't learn on earth it colors our first experiences in the spirit world you feel like saying something i was just going to ask you to maybe explain a little bit how um you've said the spirit our location in the spirit world reflects our soul condition mm. um why it's set up that way and how it changes for people once they start exercising a desire yeah so you can think of your soul condition really as your ability to reflect either natural love or divine love or both so that's your soul condition now your soul condition is like a combination of emotions right so you have all these different emotions in you some of them will be emotions of anger about certain things you might have rage about certain things you might have sadness about other things when you in your childhood you may not have felt certain emotions and certain things got suppressed in you so you might have feelings of disappointment about your life and lots of other things may be within you it's the sum total of all of that that's your soul condition and your soul condition creates a location in the spirit world where you reside when you first pass now a lot of times our soul condition on earth isn't as good as what we think it is and so what we're creating in the spirit world isn't quite as good as what we hope it would be and i'll illustrate that with another passing perhaps but in the case of the example i've given his soul condition probably mirrors pretty much the location that he'll be passing into and the location possibly that he passed from in the spirit world in, in, from the earth so so there wouldn't be perhaps too many shocks for him aside from a few um, feelings about you know people's truth you know what he notices people to be truthfully doing and saying now what he feels from them and the difference between what actually he was treated when he was on earth in the case of other people passing like if you let's say you were a really die hard religious person let's say you were um, a christian person christian in quotations i'll put it because uh, it won't be the christian that was taught back in the first century any times it will be a modification of that and let's say you became during your life quite dogmatic about it like you became really firm and dogmatic about your, your practice of christianity and you would become quite argumentative with other people who believed anything different and after a while the only persons that you ever spent time with were generally people of the same faith let's say now if you passed in that condition your condition in your mind is i'm at one you know i'll be at one with god i'll be on G uh, jesus up there with jesus you know next to god and that's what the belief system is in your mind but actually your soul condition is very very different to that in the example i've given because if you've got this anger and bigotry towards other people then your condition of love needs improvement and what the, it's the condition of love that is going to determine where you go in your in the spirit world so you imagine if you're in that person now you you have all this concept intellectual concept of where you will be going and then you actually get there and it's nowhere what is nothing of what you actually expected because 
you're not actually at God's right hand seeing God and talking to God and playing harps or anything like that. <laughs> What's actually happening instead is you're now in this first fear location with some other angry religious spirits, right? Right, who are, have been angry in their life with other people and you're there in this location where people are getting upset with you from different religious dominant denominations and you're getting upset with them and, and there's all this interaction going on. Now imagine how disappointed you would be. And in fact many of them who do that instantly go into this place of you can't trust anything. You can't trust any person that talks about religion at all and a lot of them at that point, although they've been religious all their lives, become atheists. So in other words they don't believe there's a God at all they don't believe in religion anymore, like just from that one experience. Others uh, stay dogmatically in their own religion and because they don't work on their emotions, they don't progress. So it's the sum total, so that, you know, this is the question that Mary asks, it's the sum total of your emotions and how much you reflect and give love that determines your location that you go to in the spirit world. And it's not your definition of love, by the way. It's God's definition of what's loving as to where you go. And there's often a huge differential between what you think love is before you pass and what God actually knows love to be. And so quite often, quite often there will be this change. Does that make sense, uh, this, this switch over? So many people, when they pass, have huge shocks. Um, and it very much depends upon what your experience has been on earth and what you've learned on earth and all of these things that you've done on earth and your moral condition on earth and your condition of love on earth that would depend on how good or bad the experience is. So let's say I'd, I'd actually murdered people on earth and then obviously when I pass my experience is going to be quite distressing and my experience of where I go to is also going to be quite distressing and I may not even realise that I've actually died for many, many years. And, uh, and in fact, there's some lovely books you can read about that, um, about some people who had murdered on earth and passed, and you can see a very, very big differential in their condition. Uh, yes, the books on the CD, there's some uh, PDF documents um, that are worth reading. Uh, I can mention a few of their names. Um, on the latest... Uh, on the latest CD that Peter has produced, I think there's a, there's a document called um, Life in the World Unseen. Now that, that is the passing of a minister. Who, he was a minister when he was on earth. He passed into the first sphere, but into the higher regions of the first sphere, so it wasn't unpleasant for him. And, and it describes his experiences after that. <coughs> there's another book uh, called... Um, um, there's one called it from Anne Sherwood that's uh, really worth, or Jane Sherwood that's really worth reading called Post Mortem Journey The Experience of Lawrence of Arabia when he passed. Um, he passed into the hills when he passed, and for the first seven years he feels, for the first seven or eight years of his life, he can't even remember his experience in the spirit world. That's the condition he passed in. And then he started to remember it. Yeah, and then all he felt was these pains, these terrible body pains that he had for such a long time as a result of some of his actions on earth. And so he had a, a much more difficult passing. There was another one um, called, I think it's called something like, um, it's, it's on the CD. Um, no. Um, Wonder in the Spirit Lands. Wonder in the Spirit Lands, that's it, yeah. <coughs> That describes a man who thought he was quite good on earth, but he was quite promiscuous with women uh, on earth. And um, he had a woman on earth who loved him dearly, which he, um, which he felt for, but, but wasn't faithful to. <coughs> Excuse me. And it describes his passing. And the first two thirds of the book describe his experience um, and the hills and how this woman's faith and this woman's love for him helped him through a lot of tricky situations. So it was really, it's a really good book to read too. And the second third of the, 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 the latter third of the book is teachings about um, 
what you would call the theories of, a, of spirits in higher spheres on the natural love path as to what truth is. And you'll find that in a lot of books. The same applies with the Postmortem Journal book as well. So there are many books now that are available to read of passings. The reason why many spirits don't come back and tell you about their passing, so you know when you go to along to a medium after somebody's passed and you ask, you know, how's mum now? And they say, oh no, mum's fine, mum's fine, you know. And if mum was a smoker, I can just see here, here, she's sitting on a rocking chair having a smoke, you know, she's fine. And all that's happened there is the medium has been given a picture by the person in question to try and allay any of your fears. It doesn't actually mean that the person is actually in that place or that condition. And that's why it's really handy if you start asking questions. So, Mum, how are you really feeling? Like, was passing a bit of a shock for you? Is it a lot different than how it was, before, you know, than you imagined? You know, ask questions like that. So if you go to a medium, um, if you get a good medium who's, you know, humble enough, that those mediums will be able to give you answers. You know, the, the mother will be able, the father will be able to give you answers of those questions as their own experience. But often when you start doing that, they start feeling like, oh, I don't know if I want to tell them the truth about this particular experience or that particular experience. It's a bit like, you know, when you have something bad happen to you on earth and somebody comes along and says, how are you today? Well, this morning I woke up and I cried for two hours, but you know, I don't want to tell them that, you know. So I just say, look, I'm pretty good, thanks, you know. Um, and it's very much like that still. If we haven't got that feeling of wanting to tell the truth all the time, uh, we'll often falsely misrepresent, uh, we'll misrepresent what is actually going on for us in the spirit world. And because many of the mediums uh, don't really, people who are mediums don't really understand that, that there is this soul condition that determines what happens to me, and many mediums can't actually feel the soul condition of the person very strongly, and the mediums often don't question the pictures that they're getting as reality. So, so unfortunately, there's a whole heap of untruth that gets them presented to people on earth that has a tendency to allay our fear, but it doesn't do much else for us in terms of helping us with truth. And so my suggestion is if you do see a medium at any point, uh, primarily to discuss, talk with somebody who's already passed, Talk to them about real things, you know. Get them to talk about their life in the spirit world if you can and find out about things because these things will influence your own and impact your own passing or the passing of many of your friends who, who, who pass as well if you have this knowledge. So my soul condition determines the location I arrive in and my belief system, whatever that be, determines what I do after that. So if I have a belief system where I can progress, then my belief system will pull people to me who help me progress. If I have a belief system, like many people who are religious on earth, particularly Christian religious on earth, will have a belief system that uh, wherever I go, that's the end of it. Like I should have done all my progression on earth, and if I didn't do my progression on earth, if I arrive in the spirit world in a dark place, then I'm fixed there forever. And if that's my belief, there's a high likelihood I'll be in that place for a long time uh, because I won't accept help. I'll just feel that I've been condemned. Microphone. <laughs> um, AJ, law of attraction, is that when you've passed as well? or yes. is that The whole spirit world is actually based, the way it's designed is actually uh, quite a loving way in that it's based around law of uh, law of compensation and law of attraction if if we passed and um, we thought we had a great development in love when in reality we actually didn't and we went off to play in the harps we'd actually never develop in love would we we'd still go with this these injuries or whatever we have within us so the way God has designed it is that when I pass I'm immediately in a place which will sh reflect to me my true soul condition um, the people around me will all, it will all be based on the law of attraction just like it is here and so that gives me an opportunity to work through whatever law of compensation or whatever um, you know injuries I have inside of me any harms that I've done to others 
um, and any hurts that I need to feel and release for myself. The trick is when people don't understand the truths that AJ's d explaining, then they go to a place and think, oh, this is it, I really stuffed up. Um, they don't understand that actually they have the opportunity to, to move through these injuries. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So, so understand the law, every law you're learning about that I've been talking to you about in all of these discussions that you've seen, all apply just as much in the spirit world as they do here. So they're actually more obvious. And they're more obvious, as Mary points yeah. out, yeah. So you'll see, in fact, one of the things you'll notice when you do pass, shortly after you pass generally, you'll see how your life on earth was determined by the law of attraction. So you know the nasty next door neighbour who's bashing on your window or you know upsetting you or the, na the, the neighbour behind you has a barking dog that annoys you all night. All of those things were all part of your law of attraction and when you pass often you start seeing that that's the case, right? And, uh, and you see it even more than when you, you're here. You see here on earth we have a tendency of flicking into this intellectual space of trying to create our life rather than seeing that everything's created by our soul condition. And so, you know, we had a talk last night, didn't we, about that, how it's so easy on earth to ignore your law of attraction. Well, in the spirit world, it's impossible to ignore your law of attraction. Um, and so a lot of things change quite a lot in the spirit world. Here in the, you know, on earth, we can often ignore the law of compensation. And the law of compensation is the principle what you sow, you reap. In other words, if some bad things are happening to you, Often it can be the result of things that you've done or you believe inside of your heart about others that are, that, are, that, are, that are not about love either. Now in the spirit world you'll start feeling the effects of the law of conversation. Firstly when you look in the mirror and you see your body, all of its shape and its distortions and everything are all a part of the law of conversation. So there are certain, all of the laws you're learning about here are exactly the same in the spirit world but even more pronounced in one major way and that is here on earth you can live next door to a really lovely kind person who's reflecting love all the time even when you are not in that state. In the spirit world all of the people who you're living with are in exactly the same state you are. Right? So you imagine if you're a person who murdered on earth every single person you're living with when you pass will be all murderers or people who wanted to murder. So you imagine that <laughs> environment. Like on earth here quite often uh, you know we can, we, can, we can steal money from other people through all sorts of so-called legal methods uh, and create our own wealth, right? And then when we pass we'll actually be in one of the lower spheres of the, uh, of the lower uh, uh, you'd call it probably a region of the first sphere in the hills and there won't even, we won't even have a house at all probably in, in, our, in that condition and we'll wonder what just happened. Like, you know, like all of a sudden I could create my beautiful environment before by stealing from others. Now I've got the result of that in the spirit world. So there's a lot of things that get imposed upon us very rapidly about and knowledge about our own condition which is often very distressing for, for spirits when they pass. Yeah. But if we, you, you know, if we use that, like we're in this place, and it's there perfectly to trigger the emotion that we've been avoiding all of our earth life anyway, if we have that knowledge, then we can move on from that place very rapidly. Yeah. yeah. Um, up the back, thanks. Uh, can we go into the mic system? Because we're recording it from the microphones. So. It just has to be on all the way up. That's it. What about um, if uh, somebody is sick here on Earth for a long period of time? Yep. How does that affect them the, in the next world? In their passing? In their passing. Yep. Um, there's probably... Sorry? That's your brother. Oh, okay. Nice to meet you. Hi. Um, <laughs> um, there's a... Uh, oh, I've forgotten the question. <laughs> if they've been sick for oh, a long time. If they've been sick, yep. Um, what happens if they've been sick for a long time? There's two possible things that will happen. Firstly, you may get sick for a long time but actually have a complete knowledge of the spirit world from what you've learned and have a really accurate knowledge of the spirit world. 
Now, if you pass with having a really, really accurate knowledge of the spirit world, then generally the sicknesses that you have on earth don't affect you very much. You have a period of recovery, if you like, of your spirit body, because sicknesses also impact upon the spirit body. The spirit body sort of recovers quite rapidly, though. And so you have a period of recovery, but you won't need to have a, lo a long period of convalescence, if you like. You'll have a fairly short period of convalescence, and then you'll be attracted to what it, whatever your soul condition is. And you'll go to a certain location of where your home was created in the spirit world through your soul condition. If you've passed without having very much knowledge of the spirit world, and it's been a long process, and when I say knowledge, a feeling-based knowledge of the spirit world, where you feel it to be true, um, when you pass, what will happen is you'll be kept in a place that's like, sort of like a hospital or a hospice, um, and you'll probably be kept asleep for some time. Uh, and while you're sleeping, uh, a lot of different plants and uh, things are brought to you and helped help you to actually recover in your spirit form and your spirit body eventually regenerates until such a point where you wake up so you sort of have a long period of sleeping like in a hospital if you like and then after then your physical body will have a lot of repairs done to it so you won't feel like you have the illness at all if you have no knowledge at all about the spirit world and your soul condition is quite poor and you have big drawing, a big energy draw from the earth in, a, in that lots of people grieve you and, and you don't have very much time to go stay asleep then. What often happens is you're automatically pulled back to the earth and you also often believe yourself to still have the same uh, physical condition. And, uh, and that can be quite damaging to, to other people on earth because you may connect with them energetically and then they start developing the same physical condition. You may also um, have a series of emotions that cause you to stay earthbound and very interested in what's happening on the earth. And you may start spending a lot of your time interested in other family members and particularly young family members who you may influence. And you may have even cause them to get the same kind of physical condition. And this is the reason why there are things such as like child onset leukemia and so forth which are often caused by spirit attachment of a spirit who passed with cancer, a family spirit who passed with cancer. And this is the reason why a lot of those kind of so-called diseases are thought to be genetic. In reality, what's happening is the spirit who passed has the can had the cancer, still believes themselves to have the cancer, still has the same emotional injuries that created their cancer, and then they connect to a child uh, like one of their relatives generally, it might be a grandchild or something that they have a lot of interest in, and then that child may develop cancer symptoms as well through their connection. And sometimes the spirit notices that they're doing it and steps away and so the child recovers, and sometimes the spirit doesn't notice they're doing it and doesn't step away and the child actually dies from the same thing the spirit themselves died of. So there, there is a lot of different experiences. Uh, what I'm basically saying is that every single experience is very unique. And uh, it depends a lot on what's going on inside of you as to what the experience will be. So, but generally, if you've had an illness on earth, you'll be either, you'll stay earthbound with the illness or you'll convalesce for various periods of time. Uh, I had a young friend of my, one of my sons, who's about 18, and he died from a massive aneurysm in the brain. Um, is that what it's called, an aneurysm? Mm -hmm. In the brain, yeah, and he just, he just passed instantly. He was just walking and he just killed over dead. Um, he actually was kept asleep for a long time in the spirit world because his mother was grieving him so much that nobody could, sp if, he was, if, he, if he was allowed to wake, um, he would have been so drawn to his mother that he wouldn't have done anything else. And so what happened was uh, the spirits surrounding him who looked after his passing tried to keep him asleep for as long as possible um, so that mum could deal with her grief which would have less of an impact on him when he woke up. And so when he woke up he had less of an impact on him and my boys talked to him about, because they, they, one of his friends, they talked to him about the spirit world and even though his mum's still grieving quite a lot, uh, she's not having a very high effect on him and what he's feeling free to do in the spirit world. 
So it very much depends on this interaction between what's happening in your own condition, what happens in your belief systems, what's happened to you physically, and also what's, happen what's happening in the, in the hearts and minds of the people who you've left behind as to how you progress in the spirit world. Yeah. And Mike? I'd just like to ask about um, a suicide. My nephew committed suicide about 13 years ago. He was 19. Mm -hmm. Um, jumped off the skillion at Terrigal, mm -hmm. um, but consequently, he, I, f I feel he actually attached himself to one of our sons, right. <coughs> who has had a lot of um, memories of his experiences on, on the earth. Of his life, so you. Yeah. yeah, yeah um, he, so he wasn't actually born at the time. Yeah. Uh, our second son. Uh, so for a long time, we actually, as a family, thought that. He was a reincarnation, reincarnation of, the, yeah. Yeah, of the nephew. And since experiencing your teachings, I've actually um, changed my mind about that. Yeah. Um, but I feel he's still attached to, to our son. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, just with suicide, like, I guess it's that kind of wrenching out of, of your body. Like, it's such a, you know, traumatic death. Mm. Um, how do I help without imposing on his free will? Mm -hmm. Uh, for him to to move through that yeah. and and not be so influencing on my on my son. On your son, yeah, good, very good question. Do you want to answer that one? Or? I'll start, and AJ will definitely <laughs> <laughs> finish. <laughs> um, I I would just say that. A bit further away from you, so it doesn't pop. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, always when dealing with spirits is to remain loving with them you know obviously your nephew uh, was in a really dark place when he passed and I imagine a lot of your family uh, really grieved him as well yeah. Which, yeah, yeah. yeah which would have created a big pull for him as well um, so you feel it's your guilt yeah yeah, yeah. So actually, you dealing with a lot of th your emotions around this incident will help help him a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you can you can talk to him even if you can't hear him. You, you just by acknowledging his presence and asking him to listen and and to explain to him the truths that you know about the spirit world now. That there's a lot of love there for him. That he just needs to deal with some some big emotions for himself. And that and tell him lovingly that he's actually influencing your son, which is not very loving to your son's free will and just to point out some truths to him. Yeah. yeah. So it's a, in a way, it's a little like, um, let's say you had a friend who was a, was a bad influence on your son. When I say bad influence, he was, he was encouraging your son to do things that your son wouldn't normally do. And he was an older friend and you were a young son. You'd at least talk with him, wouldn't you? You'd at least speak with him. And so it's no different if they've passed than if, they've, than if they're here on earth. Still, still speak with him as if he's here. Um, can I talk a little though about suicide and the condition that generates it? Um, and this might help you in terms of helping, helping your nephew. Um, firstly, a person who suicides generally uh, goes through a few basic emotions. One of the emotions generally is that nobody cares for me. Uh, nobody loves me, nobody cares for me, my life's a real mess and it's never going to look any better than this. So that's an emotion that he may have had when he passed. Did he actually leave a note or anything or he just... Yeah. Yeah. And did he say much in the note? I Can you just speak in? Can, you know it off heart. Can you tell yeah. me a little of it? To all, the, all of those that I've loved and known, thanks, I've had a great time, but it's time to move on. Right. Um, yours in good nature, Aaron. Right. So very, very simple. Very, yeah, very, very simple, very straight to the point. Um, yeah. It sounded more like he was, for my sister and her husband, it sounded more like he was going to go on a fishing trawler or something. Like, you know, he yeah. just walked the half an hour down to the skillion and they f a fisherman found him yeah. that morning, like the next morning. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so it was... But like you were saying before about when you know, someone passes... And then you, you hear all these different experiences and you hear what people are saying about you. It was almost like that quite a few people in his life had a different part of the puzzle when it came to his life. Mm -hmm. And then when he passed, everybody 
got together and started to fit those puzzle Puzzles pieces together. together, but nobody had the whole picture mm. of what he was going through. And I th so what was he going through at the time that, that, um, that it's become clear? He was 19. Yeah. He was a star football player at school. Yeah. Uh, left school. His dad was in the Navy for a long time. Um, so he didn't know what he wanted to do. Yeah. He actually applied for the Navy a couple of times, but he was a sleepwalker. Yeah. So they actually kept... Um, saying no, 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 no. you can't. Uh, which disappointed, I know, his dad. Yeah. Um, he ended up working at the chickadee chicken factory um, in third grade football. So he went from first grade star to yeah. third grade. I think he felt he was a great disappointment to his family. family. Yeah. Uh, he, he came as a middle son of three boys. Yeah. And consequently, who he's attached to in, in our family is my middle, middle son, son of three boys. Yeah. Um, and he looks very much like him, actually, too. Yeah. Uh, so he he used to wander around at night. He used to talk a lot at night. Yeah. I actually um, we actually used to do a, a bit of meditation together. And when he was 16, um, him and I were, were meditating together, and we were very close. And he stopped breathing. Yeah. <coughs> and uh, he basically at that time had said that a spirit had told him to stop, breathe, stop breathing. Yep. So I always felt that was he being influenced to end his life at yep. that time. So Certainly. that's a big thing for, you know, that I've had to kind of carry. Yep. Um, and I had to actually bring him out of this um, place that mm -hmm. he was in. Mm -hmm. um, and he, his eyes changed colour. Mm -hmm. he, he was wandering around the house. So he had a lot of influence at that time. Yep. Um, you know, through spirit, uh, and that was quite an amazing, you know, experience. And then he was fine for a couple of years, and then this, you know, th right. basically three years later, yeah. he ended his life. Yeah. So, um, I feel he was greatly influenced by by spirit. Do you mind if I talk specifically about what's happened yes. to, to him? Um, no. <laughs> you don't mind. You don't mind. You, you want you want me to do that? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, Okay, um, you're right. He, the reason for his sleepwalking was actually spirit. It was to do with the spirit attached to him. Um, and he was very mediumistic all of his life, uh, your nephew. So, so he was easily influenced by some spirits as a result of that. You're correct in saying like about his, his feelings of being a disappointment to the family. Um, he was enjoying his life, but he always felt that he would always come up and, and be disappointing. Now, what happened was that was this spirit fe felt the same feelings as he felt, and the spirit had a viewpoint that you might as well die and move on. You know what I mean? Like get out of this life was the viewpoint of the spirit. And so, what happened was this spirit actually motivated him to suicide. Right? Now, the, the, you can see the big discrepancy between his letter to you and what he's actually doing. The letter was saying, it's time for me to move on, and yet what is he actually doing? He's connecting to your son and not moving on. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm. So, so his personal emotions are of big... He, he was very surprised that he actually did what he did. He was very surprised that he suicided himself, I'm saying after his past. Sorry, can I just say to you that his injuries, yeah. um, it seemed to be that he actually possibly changed his like halfway down or whatever changed his mind because he actually had um, dirt under his fingernails so he'd actually possibly struggled yeah. down the yeah. cliff and gone oh my god what have I done yes yeah. um, and landed on his back yeah. so he's uh, there the actually was a you know a discrepancy of whether he actually jumped or, or fell, or fell yeah. but he was over the fence there's actually if you've been up to the yeah. skilling there's a like a guardrail kind of thing yeah. he, was he actually chose to, there. to step off but then in the moment of the choice yeah, he's didn't want to make the choice no. does that make sense yeah and a lot of people who suicide by the way have this exact same thing because a lot of people who suicide are heavily motivated by spirit with the same kind of emotions and then in the in the act itself want to undo the act but but often it's too late particularly for 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 boys or men because most men choose an act that is irreversible whereas many women who choose the act often uh, choose a less uh, you know a less damaging act like maybe pills or something like that 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 you can actually get out of at a certain time 
but a lot of the men don't and this is why a lot of you know particularly boys that age through to the age of 25 generally do pass when they choose to suicide but but he had that feeling he didn't want to suicide himself he felt motivated and pushed into it in a way by the spirit who was with him so what's happened now is he he's, he's in this he, he doesn't want to go to the spirit world he he feel and and this is why he's reconnected with your son he doesn't want to go to the spirit world because the location in the spirit world isn't very good uh, because of his lack of love of self and uh, what he needs is some help and there's plenty of people who want to help him in the spirit world who have been suicides themselves who have worked through the emotions that he needs to work through which are emotions about being a disappointment to other people and um, he needs to work through that group of emotions uh, you can help him a lot do that um, by actually speaking with him uh, and 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 talking to him frankly firstly about what he's doing to your son um, and because uh, unfortunately because he has this group of emotions there's a high likelihood your second son's going to have the group of emotions as well right and and as you know that's that seems to be what's developing his personality seems to mirror he, he actually from the moment he was born he was six months old going on 15 yeah two years old going on 19 he yeah. always he was out of our three boys has pushed and pushed and pushed yeah he's 11 years old now yeah and he's actually settled down a, a lot more the older he gets the more settled he gets yeah. but he he was always and we you know uh, i guess i was very very strongly feeling he was a reincarnation of him what what reason why that's happened is because your nephew felt this deep disappointment of of living an unfulfilled life and now he's connecting to your son. He's wanting your son to live a completely fulfilled life. Like, so there's a lot of uh, heavy uh, pushing, I suppose you could say, onto your son um, to actually live a completely fulfilled life that your nephew didn't have the chance to live. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so he's quite, um, uh, pushy is probably the best word, like with your son at times which then makes your son appear to be quite pushy with the rest in of the hurry. family in, or in a hurry, hurry to grow in up. life yeah. yeah and the truth is that uh, um, it would benefit both of them to separate for a period of time and the relationship be redefined it's like your, your nephew could in fact be a, a really good help to you, his cousin but but um, only if your nephew works through some of his his issues in the spirit world and some of his emotions which he's avoiding doing so the key is to talk to him about that and there are a lot of groups of spirits who have been suicides on earth who have worked through their emotions completely who can help your nephew greatly and it's just a matter of talking to him about that being an alternative that he can actually have a fulfilled life in the spirit world he can actually have a lot of the things he felt he missed out on things like relationships and so forth he can actually have in the spirit world and he d he's just not aware that he can have them at this point and so there's a it would be very helpful for him to have a discussion with some spirits in the spirit world about what is possible for him to experience because at the moment he's sort of making his own guesswork about what he could experience and so that would help him a lot to actually disconnect and when he does reconnect with your son because he will always have an affinity with him he will can he can reconnect with him in a more loving manner rather than in this manner that he's currently connecting to him which is which is sort of almost pushing your son in a certain direction without your son really having his free will his free will is being quite dominated by by uh, his, his cousin the the other issue for um, your nephew is in the spirit world is that um, he's quite annoyed with this spirit who influenced him which is understandable is he still are they still connected now no, no because the spirit who influenced him is actually in a darker condition than your son is um, oh, sorry than your nephew is I'm saying um, so your nephew is in a brighter condition he's still in the first fear in in in, in, uh, in not a good condition but the spirit who was a, who was influencing him on earth was actually in a darker condition than your nephew currently is and so he, they that the instant he passed there was a disconnection between the two of them um, so he, he's not never even met the man as far as I'm aware who was influencing him and it was another boy who had the same kind of experience as your nephew has had on earth but uh, 
the, the issue is to talk with him about all of these things and he will listen. Um, if you'll notice if your son, if you start talking and notice your son's behaviour when you're talking to your nephew, your son will go into a very distractive behaviour if you start talking to your nephew and your nephew doesn't want to hear. You follow me? So your son will like get up and be distracted and distract you and want to get away from the whole conversation. That's what it will feel like. Um, when I say talk to your nephew, you can talk to him without your son being present, but your son will come and distract you if your nephew does not want to hear. Do you follow me? So you'll actually find that your nephew, his openness to hearing what you've got to say will be, will be displayed through your son's actions. Um, so if you notice that happening, talk to him about, you're now distract distracting me, you're now actually harming my son by pushing him around and getting him to do things because you don't want to hear and this is not very nice behaviour, this is not loving behaviour. And talk to him about love and, and how love is displayed. It's something that he didn't feel he had too much of on earth. And I always felt that he wanted me to be his mum. Yep. Because... Yeah. Um, he feels very connected to your family. Yeah. yeah as a result. <clears throat> and that's I felt that he when he passed, he he then 